it says this. Imagine you have a complex number, uh, which is, I use this term for the first time, which is unital, meaning that the absolute value of this number is 1. That's exactly the explanation for the term unital complex number. Uh, we have to prove, basing on this information alone, that the real part of the quotient built like this will be zero. That's the example where exponential forms or trigonometric forms. In fact, from now on, I will use these terms uh, at the same time simultaneously, and basically I don't make any difference between these two. Trigonometric form, it's basically the exponential form and vice versa. Or this is because of the Euler formula. So Look I'm, I'm gonna, how I'm going to argue this question. If my number is unital, the exponential form for such number will be of this type. Because exponential form in general, it has the modulus of that number times the <coughs> e to the power of i argument of that number. Modulus is 1. That's why nothing is present is here. And the argument, I just used the letter t, symbol t to represent the argument of my z number. Again, argument in general may be any number, but you can make an extra restriction to the interval like so, and then you can claim that this is a principal argument, which is my condition was that this one is strictly less, and this one is less or equal. That's, that's the definition for the principal argument, actually. So if my z is like this, I will use this z now. I will put it in this fraction. And I will try to identify the real part of that fraction. Look at this. Here's my fraction. And now I sub in my expression for z by the exponential. Here it is. At this stage, well, we have a complex number. Here's a complex number. Oh, here's a quotient of two complex numbers. We need to identify the real part of this complex number. And we have a way to do it. We can do it by multiplying this fraction by the complex conjugate of the denominator and do and expanding everything out. That's one way of doing things. Yet, the reason I chose this question is that there's another trick here you can use to shorten your computations. Do you know the trick? Or I'll put it differently. If you were in my place, what, what do you think would be the next step? Any suggestions? A, eh? plus and minus? Oh, thank you. You know what? Uh, uh. Yeah, you got minus now. Now we fix the typo. What do you think will be the next step? Well, one suggestion from the class came already very close to the perfect one, almost perfect one. Uh, the suggestion was replace exponentials with the cos and sine, convert everything to the trigonometric form. And if you, like, if you do it from the top of your head, if you make an effort, if you make this mental effort, if you put it here, there will be one take cos plus i sine, one plus cos plus i sine. And then one take cos and one plus cos, I mean one take cos in the numerator and one plus cos in the denominator, this is something you can probably simplify a bit further by half angle formula or double angle formula, and then you will find common sine which you can factor out, something like this. Right? Do, do you... Follow me at least roughly. Good, good. But this is not a this is not complex numbers. This is a trigonometry kind of thing. I, I'm hoping for the complex number solution. I can factor out E I T. This is a half angle formula which was suggested. But I'm you see again, it is a half angle formula. I'll fix the plus and minus in a second, the typo. It is the half angle formula, but we don't use the signs and cos. If I factor out this multiple in the enumerator, if I factor out this multiple in the denominator, given that I will fix the typo, like this, you can cancel this out, and these brackets, these are the Euler formulae which give you, one of them gives you sine, the other one gives you cos. Look how much trouble I avoided by using the complex numbers. Oops. Here's the result. I mean, I have to fix typo again. The difference of signs, the difference of E 
it will be here will be negative two i times sine, and here will be two i i cos, and the result will then be negative. Obviously, not cotangent, but tangent of t on 2. It's a very powerful trick, actually. You will save lots of times on many questions in yellow book, oh. on some questions in yellow book, we'll just be realistic. On some questions in yellow book, if you remember this trick, symmetrizing this expression, basically what happened, I symmetrized the expression. Rather than having one take e, I had e and e with almost symmetric expression exponents. This is a manifestation of this double angle or half angle formula from the, from the trigonometry you know from the score. And in complex numbers it takes a much neater and more structural form, a lot, structure, a lot more structural form than when you, try to when you try to represent this in terms of the trigonometric functions alone. And that's the answer to the question, but that, that finishes the answer because basically we just found the Cartesian form of my quotient and this Cartesian form is missing the real part. Any questions?